going on everybody welcome back to the clay table to another special episode of show and tip where we are going to dive into the process of what it takes to make custom eyes so for this episode i am going to show you some eyes that i have made previously and some things that i have learned to get a great set of looking eyes for your sculpture or bust that you may be working on so with that being said what we're going to do is dive into the materials that you need don't be overwhelmed. It does require a lot, but if you are at the level of wanting to make your own custom eyes, it is a great investment. I know some of these things are pricey, um, but I will do my best to let you know how to get things as cheaply as possible. Um, so, you know, if you have the opportunity to purchase it all at once, that's great. If not, take your time, get it slowly, and eventually you'll be able to make whatever eyes you want. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. Do not be overwhelmed by everything on this table. You have this video now, you can rewatch it. Um, I am going to list where I got these products from. Um, I did get them all from three websites um, and I will explain which ones came from where. So uh, as you can see here are some eyeballs. These are the two most recent pair that I've made, the very left and the very right. Um, this is going to be for a Grinch bust that I'm going to be redoing. Um, if you have not seen my Grinch time-lapse video, go check that out on my channel. And this is going to be for Voldemort, which again, I'm going to be redoing um, and replacing these busts uh, due to they were sold. So, these two were before I had this vacuum degasser. So, if you can see right in the middle, there's an air bubble. And there are many other air bubbles around the perimeter underneath the clear coat. Um, so since I have been vacuum degassing, I have not had that issue and uh, it's been great. So looking around the table, um, we do have a scale here to measure uh, in grams. This is found on Amazon right here. I have a UV hardening resin which is also found on Amazon. Um, I also have a spray release. This is for the Mold Pal Ease 2300 spray release. This is found from Brick in the Yard Mold Supply. I also have TC800 is a castable resin. It is a fast setting resin. Uh, usually cures in about two minutes. That is found on also brick in the yard mold supply. I also have art and glow epoxy resin. It is crystal clear. Um, it has a 40 minute working time. So it is a slower curing resin, um, but I'm okay with that. This is not required. This is going to be something that we experiment in the video here. It's called Cryptolite and it is from Smooth On and it essentially makes things glow under UV and or black light. So I'm gonna put that in the eyes, make them extra special. Not required, but fun. These are something that I made from Home Depot. I got a base and a screw, the same diameter of the casting mount from this mold. Now this mold I did get from Fourth Seal Studios. Go check them out. They make customized, they sell custom molds um, to allow you to make your own eyes. So these, this set here, which is 26 millimeter, I don't know if you can see that, but it is etched on their mold. Um, okay, so outside of those things, I have Vaseline and a brush for the Vaseline. Um, this is not required, but I am going to use this to demonstrate something. Um, just a caliper to measure millimeters. Uh, some basic paints. Well, not basic. They're Tim Gore's Bloodline, which is awesome. Gotta give it that guy. Great paints. Um, and we also have our vacuum degasser, which was purchased on Amazon. It is a 1.5 quart, so very small. For small volume but that's perfect for what I work with and then I'm gonna pan to my left here 
I have a custom made pressure pot. This is a central pneumatic pressure pot. It is not originally a pressure pot. It is a paint sprayer from Harbor Freight and it does require modifications such as your blow off valve, um, an updated um, gauge, some other valves, and um, I also replaced the wing nuts with bolts so that I can uh, apply more pressure when putting the, the top on. Um, there is YouTube videos that explains how to save money and not purchase a commercial made pressure pot. Um, if you have the money, I highly recommend you go with the commercial made pressure pot. This is a lower budget option. It does work great. Um, but there, you have to make sure you're doing it correctly. It can be very dangerous. You're putting pressure inside of this tank um, and you do not want that to explode. So do your research, do your homework. This is not something to play around with, um, but it can be done and many people do it successfully, including myself. So this is something that uh, takes caution and homework to do. So keep that in mind. All right, back to the table. Okay, so when we make these eyeballs, they are going to come out of this mold and they are not going to have pupils in them, such as this pupil right here, this iris. Um, it is going to be an eyeball cast without any iris or pupil. So another thing that we're gonna be using in this video are irises. Uh, these can actually be uh, purchased online. Uh, they are very cheap and you can get them in different diameters. Uh, this is just over 11 in diameter. The entire eye is 26 millimeters. So the iris itself is just a hair over 11 millimeters. Um, and that will plug directly in the center of the eye. Um, for my purposes, I did go ahead and make some custom irises. Uh, here I have the Grinch. Um, this is all done via Photoshop. Um, so if you don't have the opportunity and means to do this, then you know you, you may have to buy a mold that uh, entails painting. I'll get into that later and not an iris. So you can actually paint in the iris rather than placing in the iris. Um, so, however, I have some uh, Pennywise different eyes here. I have um, Palpatine eyes here. These are all custom made. For the purposes of this video, I did go ahead and pre-cut out a couple of Pennywise. It, the clown. Yes, we are going to be making some Pennywise eyes. So here are the irises for that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take our molds to make our eyes. We are going to get the casting plates with the bolt placed inside of it ready to go. Um, we are going to take our brush and Vaseline, and what we're going to do is coat the casting plate so that the resin does not stick onto this resin. It's going to separate, become a barrier, and allow the eyeball to twist off very easily. So you want to coat inside these grooves and the bottom of the base uh, casting plate, including the bolt itself. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up time, and let's get it done. Okay, so now that we have both of those coated, they're not overly coated, but it is a, a layer of Vaseline on there to separate. Um, we are now going to grab our release, our spray release, and we're going to spray just a little bit. It does include this little straw here, just like WD-40. And just a little bit into the mold. Now we're going to take our pinky and just make sure it's not pooling in any areas and just rub it around the mold. You can wear gloves for this process. It's already too late for me. There's no turning back. Okay, so we've got our spray release coated inside of our mold. And next we are going to take our TC800 resin and get that ready to pour on our scale. Okay, so TC800 is a 100A to 88 B. This is our A, this is our B. I'm not the best in math, but I think I got this. So I do not do any specific calculations. Um, I just go based off of a very close approximate to that measurement. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pour our A into this cup here. We're gonna make sure our gram scale is to zero. Go ahead and we're not gonna add too, too much because we don't wanna waste any. 
let's just go for the sake of even numbers. I am going to add 10 grams of A. There's 10. Reset the scale and it is 88 to 100. So we're going to get our part B right at around nine. There's eight, and just a smidge more. Makes close to nine, and oh, it turned nine. Oh, back and forth, back and forth. So I would call that very close to 88. We're going to take a stir stick. This is uh, from Home Depot to stir paint, or to pry the lid off. I get them for free all the time. So this is something that you can take into consideration. Okay, so this is our Cryptolite, which makes it glow. Again, not required, but I think it's fun. And I'm gonna add a few drops of Cryptolite. You do not need much. And we are going to stir this TC800 thoroughly. And now this is a fast setting resin, so you cannot take too much time to get it ready to go. But you do wanna make sure it's stirred properly. Okay, I'm gonna set that on paper towel. A little bit of a bend there. All right, and now we are going to place this resin inside of our mold all the way up to the lip, just like that. Okay, we did not use it all, but now what we're going to do is pop in our casting plates. There are grooves here that fit the grooves inside of this mold. in really nice and really nice okay now we're gonna wait about two minutes all right we are back so it has been about three to four minutes I had to give it a little extra time and one way that you can tell if your resin is ready for demold is by looking at the cup that you poured it from um, it is hard down there so again, uh, TC800 castable resin is a very quick demold time. Now the bottle does say demold after 60 minutes, which is an hour. However, I believe working in small quantities like this, and I've done it time after time, um, it is ready in about four minutes. Um, so we are going to get our thumb under this casting plate and pop it out. And there we have the base of the eye. Do the same here, comes right out. That uh, spray release really helps it just pop right out. So, okay, so now we have both of our base eyes here and they will be a little bit warm to the touch, but due to the Vaseline that we put on, you can screw them right off and they come right off the casting plate like that. A little pressure, nope, that one came right off. Okay, so. So far, so good. Get rid of this little bit of flange. All right. Okay, what I'll do now is I'll take a paper towel and I'll just get all of that um, spray release off of the eyeball um, because it was in the mold and it just captures a little bit of the spray release on this part of the eye. Um, and you may be asking yourself, why is there another set of molds here? Well, the reason is because these are the clear coat molds. So this is your mold to make your eyeball, which we just did, as you saw. But now, once we get down the process, you want to get this clear, I think it's cornea, if I'm not mistaken, on the eye, and this is what this mold does. So essentially, instead of this mold being flat on the bottom like this, this one is rounded, and it allows the resin to sit a little bit under this part of the eye, so that when it hardens, it hardens um, spherical and allows there to be a crystal clear cornea sitting around this so it's um very very good quality molds i, I gotta compliment uh fourth seal studios um for the you know for their molds um, very appreciative of them and how helpful they've been okay so we are going to now take our self homemade eyeball stands and we are going to screw these on. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna take just any old little paintbrush 
the crappier the better as it's going to get destroyed and we're going to take our uv resin and we're going to place a little a little bit here on the top not a lot and then the same here um, this is going to hold our iris on so we're now going to put on our pennywise eye okay just like that and it's not centered yet we're going to worry about that in a second and now we're going to put a little bit more right on top and these are made of hard stock paper so i went to your standard supply store and i asked for glossy hard stock paper to print the eyes out on and that is what the paper is made of so it is pretty firm um, but basically what we're going to do is set these irises in so that they're locked in and this uv resin i found is a great way to do it center it and make sure it's centered because you don't want your iris to be off because once you put this uv light on there it will set it in there for good okay that one looks good that one looks good all right so now again i got a little bit of excess here i'm going to smooth that out and then i'm going to take my light and i'm going to set that in place now i don't know if you can see it on camera but it's the eyeball itself is glowing a lot um that's because of that crypto light that i put in there so it normally wouldn't shine so bright all right we've got those set now so those are not going anywhere okay so now i'm going to take my tim gore's bloodline and i don't need much i'm just going to take a few different colors and this is where you just get to play around honestly you get to just have at it, free for all. You're making your own eyes here, you know? You get to do what you want, and that's the fun part about it. So I'm just going to take a few different colors. Um, this is a injury okra, which is kind of like an orangish vomit color. <laughs> um, a coagulated crimson, and just because I wasn't sure which one I wanted, a blood red. Now... Take a very small paintbrush. And it is a water-based paint. Um, so I don't want to go overboard here, but I am just going to get rid of a lot of the excess and just give this eye a little bit of color at the bottom. I just want a very light red on it. I'm just trying to make it look creepy because the clown is freaking creepy uh, i'm gonna go ahead and speed up this part of the video and just kind of wing it okay so i have got these to where i am happy with them um did not take very long just kind of slapped it on there and winged it and it's completely okay so those are going to dry there for a second go ahead and get the paint out of the way Okay, so next up, I did forget to, in the beginning of the video, mention that the veins are made of red twine. Um, so you get a ton of it. Um, it'll last you a lifetime for one thing of twine. Or whatever this is called. I think it's twine. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll take a little piece of it, and I'll kind of just do a quick rough measurement from the um, iris to the bottom. It's about that long. So... I will go ahead and take my scissors and just cut off. Eh, let's do two. Probably won't need anywhere near all of that, but just to be on the safe side. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take and pull it apart. And it's going to come out in about four different large strands. So there's three right there. Set those aside. And then take this one as well. And there's another two. So that's plenty. So in order to get our veins to stick, we are going to take the same UV resin we used earlier. But this time we're just going to coat the entire outside of the eye. It does not take, you don't want to overcoat it. Um, just take enough to get a nice even 
layer across the eye itself. If you get it on the iris, that's okay. We are not going to shine any UV on it yet because we are going to be putting on our veins. So what you'll do is take just a little bit at a time, kind of spread it out. See if you can get it to see it. There we go. Okay, so just spread it out like that. And again, there is no right or wrong way to do this. It depends on how veiny you want the eye to be. So you'll notice that once it goes on, it just starts looking natural. Um, it's okay if you have some thick veins. And again, if you want to wear gloves, don't do as I say, not as I do. So an easy way to do this is to grab the bottom and the top and just pull from the bottom and you pull a little bit of vein or a little bit of twine out each time. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to vein these eyes and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so after I get those fibers on there, I'm going to go ahead and just lightly pat down without trying to pull them off, just to get them seated on the eyeball. Okay, so we still had plenty of fibers left over, but now I'm going to go ahead and set these on permanently. So once you do hit that with the uh, UV, you will see that they're pretty set on there. Um, there are some strays, so what I'll do is take the scissors and I'll just cut them off. And then I'll look from the top to see if there's any that I can just snip off that are flying crazy. So we are just about done with the um, eyeball itself without the clear coat. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our secondary mold and get that ready. So make sure it's not the original mold. Um, you can look into it. You probably can't tell on video, but the original mold has a flat bottom because the eye is flat. The secondary clear coat mold has a very circular bottom. You can feel it. Um, so make sure you get the right one. If you grab the wrong one, it will not work. Your clear coat will not be able to form around the eye. So we're going to set the other two out of the way. We're going to grab our um, mold release, spray release once again and do the exact same process as we did the first time. Just a little bit. Next we're going to get our Vaseline and brush again and we're going to prep the casting plate again except for this time we're going to do the bottom, the bolt, the grooves, the entire thing except for uh, the Allen portion of the bolt. So I'm going to go ahead and lather the entire thing up. Okay, so we are getting there. We are going to get ready for our clear coat mold. So we are going to take these off. Um, we let them dry for a little bit. Um, now carefully put this on the casting plate. You are going to want to get it down to the bottom. So make sure not to just rip it because you can tear these strands off. So you want to make sure you, you grab, hold firmly, and twist. Don't let your thumbs slide across and, and rip your your work off. Um, I hope that makes sense by saying that, but just be careful when you're putting your eyeball back onto your casting plate so that you do not rip your veins off. Now in the beginning you can twist it pretty fast, but when it gets down to the bottom there's a little bit more friction. So hold onto the eyeball tight and screw it to the bottom of the casting plate and then release so that you don't tear your veins off. So we are now going to take our epoxy resin and we are going to go ahead and weigh this out. Now the resin is a one-to-one, -one, um, so it is the same amount for both part A and part B, which is the resin and the hardener. Um, so the same amounts. We're not going to use a whole lot. Now because the reason I say that is because with this mold, the flat mold, the one that we made the eyeball with, you had to fill it up to the tip, to the brim. Now, this one you do not fill up to the brim. You fill halfway inside the mold, not including this outer region, just the hole inside, just where the uh, eyeball is going to sit. You fill that up to the halfway mark, um, and then you're going to also pour it around your eye. Um, I'll show you that here shortly. So let's go ahead and weigh this out. We are at zero grams. 
Now this is going to be more than needed, but I'm just going to go ahead and do, I uh, might creep up to eight. Yeah, let's do eight grams of each. Again, more than needed, but we're not going to use it all. Let's clear that to zero and let's pour in eight of the hardener. That's eight. Okay, so we're going to take that original stir and we are going to go ahead and stir for a couple minutes. Now that we have our resin mixed thoroughly, you're going to see that there are lots of air bubbles inside of it. You may not be able to see it in this video, but with the eye, lots of micro bubbles in it. And that's what we are going to start the degasser for. Um, degassing, it can take up to five to 10 minutes, depending on how many bubbles you want to remove. Um, generally, I found it about five or six minutes. Um, it's removed an adequate amount. So uh, make sure to do your homework on your vacuum degasser. Make sure your pump has oil. Remove the vent prior to using, which is right here. Um, now, there's no vacuum pressure in it, so the lid will come off very easily. Um, I went ahead and put in a paper bowl so that if in case it does ever boil over, it will be captured and won't ruin the integrity of the actual uh, chamber here. However, it has not boiled over yet. Um, so we're going to put that in the center. We're going to put our lid back on, make sure our lid is centered by feeling under the edges. Okay, so we have both of our valves closed right now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and kick on the uh, vacuum pump and our PSI pressure is going to go up to 30 uh, PSI and that is going to max out this unit and that is what we want. Go ahead and turn it on. I'm gonna open this valve to allow the air to be sucked out and then once all the air is sucked out, it's gonna reach 30. I'm gonna go ahead and close this valve. Okay, so now we're gonna watch the air be taken out from the resin. All right guys, so as you can see, there are lots of micro bubbles and bubbles at the top of the resin still. Um, it's been degassing now for approximately seven to eight minutes. What we're gonna do now is we are going to release an open the blue valve, which is going to allow air to come in through this filter and into the pot. So we're going to allow air back into the pot now, um, which is going to stabilize and equalize the pressure in the pot. Um, now you're going to see, I'm going to open this very slowly and you're going to see that the bubbles are going to pop at the top. So let's go ahead and do that. Very slowly, you want to open it. If you open it too fast and suddenly, you're letting too much air into the pot at once and it has, it can um, cause the resin to essentially just be thrown to the top and make a mess. So make sure that's slowly. So now let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so we are back to zero. Our lid is going to just simply pop off now because everything is back to normal. Let's go ahead and take this out and it looks really nice in there. Very few, if any, bubbles. Um, and again, if there are any bubbles remaining, that is what the pressure pot is for. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and pour it into our mold. Okay, so for this part of the process, I recommend having a paper plate or something to catch any um, resin that drips off so that it doesn't harden onto any of your furniture or floor. So again, we're going to fill this clear coat mold up halfway. So go ahead and start pouring. 
it's about halfway. Doesn't have to be exactly perfect. And that's about halfway as well. Okay, so this is where you're gonna take your eyeball and you're going to coat the eyeball itself as well before you pop it in. So go ahead and pour it over. And I usually do like in a circular motion. Just try to coat the whole thing, set that to the side. And again, you have those grooves, so you're gonna find your grooves and press straight down and it's oozing out and that's perfectly normal. And we're going to repeat with this one. Okay. And find your groove, which is about right there. Yep. All right. Okay, so we got our pressure pot ready to go. Um, what we're gonna do is go ahead and put these molds inside and I'll go ahead and show you inside now. All right, so as you can see, there is a piece of wood in there to make this flat. I'm gonna go ahead and put my first one in and my second one beside it. Okay, so on every lid for a pressure pot, there is a rubber gasket here. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is take Vaseline and go ahead and rub a little layer of Vaseline so that we get a nice fit and there is no air escaping. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So now we're gonna go ahead and seat the lid back on. Um, the first time I used this pressure pot, um, I did not have any, any leaks and I've never had a leak. So just to be on the safe side, I made a mark of where I put my pot on um, because many times people do have air leaking um, and you need to find out where that air is leaking from. But again, I have never had that problem. So I just made a mark and know uh, where I place my lid every time. That way I don't have any leaking air. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and screw this top on. I did replace the wing nuts with bolts so that I can get a more firm uh, grip with the uh, pressure pot and the lid. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those down. Okay, so we now have our lid tightened on our pressure pot. Um, we do not have any pressure in this as of yet. Once again, um, do not take this lightly. Make sure you do your homework and make sure you do your research on pressure pots. Um, and what we're gonna go ahead and do is turn on our air pump and then um, we are going to release this valve, which is going to open the valve, allowing air to go into the pot rather than earlier we were taking air out of a pot. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay, so we have reached 40 PSI. As you've seen what I did there, I opened the valve very slowly and allowed the air to go in very slowly um, to reach that 40 PSI. You do not want it um, you know, going in too fast, risking jeopardizing the pot, any uh, you know, bad malfunctions that way. So slowly open the valve, allowing the air go into the pot at, uh, I do 40 PSI. The pot is a uh, maximum of 60 PSI. I don't feel it's necessary to reach the max. Um, so anywhere from 30 to 40 PSI should give you good results. Um, so far, 35 to 40 PSI has done perfectly fine um, for me. So we're gonna let this pot sit for about 18 hours and let the resin cure. And when it is cured, I will pull it out. Okay guys, so our 18 to 20 hours is um, up. And what we're gonna go ahead and do now is release the pressure via this blow-off valve 
um, from the tank. So you're gonna see this gauge go from 40 to zero. It does rush out pretty quickly. So if you wanna put a ball valve on, you can, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and release that now. Okay, so now let's grab our molds. Okay, so a few things you'll need to finish this uh, up is a, well, it's optional. A drill helps for polishing, um, a polishing pad, a pliers, um, some polishing compound, and the Allen key that went with the mold. So let's go ahead and pop these guys open. Looking good. And looking good, no air bubbles. Okay, so we are now going to take our Allen and back out the bolt so that it is released from the eye. About that far and you should just be able to pop the eye right out and again that's what the petroleum jelly helps with is loosening everything up and pop off the eye and what we're gonna do now is take out these bolts completely for this part we're gonna go ahead and clean up these casting plates and clean off the resin that is on them. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now what I found is easy is if you take your eyeball and you put the Allen, or the, uh, yeah, the Allen bolt back in and go ahead and tighten it down a little bit. Not too tight, enough. Like that. And then if you grab your drill and you open up and place that bolt in and close it down on the eye so that it spins like that. So what you'll do now, what I do is put a little bit right inside one of these grooves and maybe another one. Go ahead and put that on that eyeball like that. Get it all nice and lathered up. And then go to a more dry section of the pad down here. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is looking great. So let's go ahead and do the other one. Okay, let's go ahead and pop this guy back out of here. Let's take out the bolt. Get our plate ready to go for the next eye. All right, and the last thing I'll do is just take a paper towel and kind of wipe off any excess polishing compound. But let's take a minute and look at our work. This isn't real enough for you, Billy. I'm not real enough for you. It wasn't real enough for Georgie. All right, y'all. So we did it. And I hope you guys liked the outcome of these Pennywise eyes. If you have made it this far, this is outside of the typical video that I make. I aim to make much shorter videos, around 10 to 15 minutes, but there's just very difficult to get the amount of information to make these inside of that time window. So if you're still sticking around, I appreciate it. And you should know everything you need to know to make your own eyes and successfully without air bubbles. So, um, like you saw that cool little feature where they glow which is again that crypto light so very cool stuff um more eyes to come guys i'm excited to see 
your eyes if you take this adventure. But anyways, thank you guys for joining in on another episode of the Clay Table Show and Tip, where we show our Pennywise. See you next time.